Guys, look at this antique dresser I found at the thrift store. As soon as I saw it, my ass got big, my heart exploded, but can I refinish it? Stick around and see. degrees outside but I had to open the garage door super quick because he deserves a full display not only do we have that failing finish that's crackling scratched up there is some bubbling right here too like if I push well not today but the other day when I was pushing it was there was movement and you can see there's a lot of cracking on this veneer. The sides and legs are just as in bad shape, but the embellishments and hardware are what made my heart skip a beat, regardless of the imperfection. Like we would say in Spanish, fue amor a primera vista. It was loved at first sight. The original handles are fantastic, so I'm definitely keeping those. And it's in the name of love that I'm willing to put in the work. Can the inside need as much love as the outside? Just wait and see. If this piece could tell stories, I can only imagine what it would tell us. Oh, that's a big chunk. Yes, the inside needs love. It's gonna be an from the inside out type project. Scratched up, very sad looking finish, but beautiful, beautiful. We're gonna take it one day at a time, one step at a time, but let's get started. Let's take this guy inside. I wanna try and do my best to preserve the details. I'm gonna use my stripper. It's 18 degrees out here in the garage right now, so it's cold. Sometimes if I try to use any chemical stripper when it's this cold, the chemical will dry before it gets to remove any of the finish. The rest I'm gonna sand. If I were to do this again, I would probably remove the hardware before removing the drawer. It's way easier. Using Green Easy. I'm gonna put a generous amount. my surface is covered up I honestly didn't want to clean the piece because I'm afraid that any scrubbing is going to break some of these molds so I just, I'm trying to be as gentle as possible of all the different furniture strippers that I've used in the past this is the only one that I feel comfortable using indoors because the odor is so mild and it's also eco-friendly and don't worry I'm gonna keep a close eye on Luna to make sure that she stays away from it before I get distracted with anything else I'm gonna be soaking the hardware on a 50-50 ratio of vinegar and water that's gonna help loosen up all that grime that has built up over time and now we can start rinsing the dresser using simple green on the outside and give it a good vacuum on the inside to eliminate any dust bunnies that are always laid behind in those tight corners. I had plans to remove the furniture stripper and give the drawer a good wash, but as life would have it, kid soccer got in the way, so it's gonna have to wait until tomorrow. Life got busy yesterday, so I ended up leaving this all night, but since I left it covered up, that keeps Green Easy active and moist. I'm gonna be using the Green Easy finishing and cleaner. I'm gonna give it a good scrub with some triple zero oh, The cleaner cool. still has no harsh chemicals. I think it's important to protect your eyes and I don't like my skin touching anything gooey. So let's get these stripped using a car box to put all the gooey stuff in. The embellishments receive an extra scrub because that finish was getting stuck in all those little folds that they had. As I'm scrubbing it, I'm realizing this is not made out of wood. This is made out of some kind of paste that's getting almost grainy when I'm scrubbing it, which I thought was interesting. 
Once I was done scrubbing the drawer, I went back out to the garage and started sanding the rest of the body. And as you can imagine, this took a very long time. I think I spent three days total sanding it from top to bottom. This is when you know if the love that you proclaim to have for the piece is real or not. Like, are we committing to this relationship? So far I am, so I'm just gonna keep going and hope for the best. This is why in my channel I always tell you not to lose hope. Sometimes in the middle of the project you could lose it. But we're keeping our hopes up today. to show you guys how the one drawer that I stripped looked after the cleaner dried. Obviously there's still some of that old dark varnish left so I'm just gonna sand that off. So today I'm gonna be tackling the inside of this dresser. All those drawers that are super scratched up as you saw at the beginning of yeah, the video. The parts that are not obvious to the eye but they need to be taken care of so let's get it done. The inside of the drawers are being sanded using the square surf prep sander and 120 grit. As it is common practice, as soon as I'm done sanding all of the things, I'm going to be rinsing all the sanding dust off using a TSP alternate and water mix. I'm going to use these coarse bendable abrasive from surf prep. That's going to get into all the curves and the grooves. I'm gonna work on all the repairs for that dresser but I realized that I didn't have what I needed for it so I had to stop at Ace Hardware and across the street from it we have a local coffee shop so I have to run in because those of you who know me well you know that I'm never gonna pass on the opportunity to enjoy a good cup of coffee and supporting a local business Let's talk a little bit about the two-part epoxy I'm gonna be using to make most of the repairs. I'm gonna be recreating the molding with this and repairing those big chunks of wood missing from the leg. Okay, let's finish our coffee and then we're gonna make the repairs. So and then we can move along with the next phase, which is priming and painting. This one's gonna be so cute, I'm so excited. Before we start making repairs, I wanna show you so that you can see the two types of wood the dresser is made of. I'm not a wood expert, but I believe this guy is made out of maple and mahogany. Why is this important? Because if I want my dresser to look cohesive, I'm gonna treat those two differently. I have to glue this back in. These are barely hanging in there. With the help of a few toothpicks, I'm making the gap in the crack larger. That way I have some space for the glue to go into. The pieces of tape are there just so that I can hopefully make this process a little less messy. Make sure to add plenty of glue in there. So I'm gonna remove the toothpicks, the tape, still messy. advantage that the glue is still wet put some in there and i'm gonna fill in this gap where the chunk of wood is missing you're gonna notice that this two-part epoxy comes in two colors and it reminds me of play-doh that's what it feels like when you knit those two colors together until they become one single color and then you can start applying it in those gaps and areas that you need 
it sets in 25 to 35 minutes but it's cured in one hour a couple things that i love about it is that it's obviously moldable and i'm using a toothpick to help me shape it uh, to resemble the rest of the molds then i can apply a color wash so yeah it's also paintable you can also stain it this piece is definitely not gonna be perfect when i'm done with it but i'm gonna get as close as i can Today, toothpicks are still in the show, my friends. I'm using them to also glue the top veneer that was just kind of hanging in there, but not so much. I let all the glue repairs dry overnight, and today I'm just gonna sand them, making them nice and smooth. Here it is priming and painting day. I'm gonna be applying a couple coats of this clear shellac base primer. Uh, I tend to struggle with drips when I use it and that's why I decided to try this handle from Rust-Oleum. It's supposed to distribute the output better. So we're gonna try it today and I'll let you know what I think of it. Super important uh, as always to make sure that you are protecting your lungs. As soon as I'm done spraying the last coat, I'm gonna be opening the door so those fumes can leave the working space. Only doing that because it's winter here in the upper Midwest, but if you're in a warmer climate area, then I would just recommend you that. work with um, well-ventilated space and that you leave your door open. There's no need to close it. While the last coat of primer dries, I'm scrubbing the hardware using triple zero steel wool and bars keepers friend. It's been one hour since I applied the last coat of clear shellac and I applied three coats, waiting about half hour between one coat and the next. And now it's time to scuff sand it to make sure that the color wash that I'm gonna be applying is gonna stick to the surface. I don't wanna sand too much. I don't wanna use anything higher than a 220 grit. Just removing that top layer to make sure that um, my paint sticks to the surface. Lastly, with the help of a sharp paper towel, I'm getting rid of all the sanding dust so that we can start color washing. As you guys know, this is my favorite part. This is one part paint of Algonquin, three parts water. I to apply a very thin coat to where I have almost no access left to wipe off like I've done in the past. I wanted to try and see if I could get away without bleaching this guy. I wanted to mention something regarding the cracks that I showed you on the top at the beginning of the video because after I sanded it, you couldn't even see them. But I'm still keeping a close eye on them to see if I see any abnormalities while I apply the color wash. Sometimes the water in the diluted paint can't penetrate the wood grain, making some adjustments. But like I said, I'm going to be keeping a close eye to see if I need to address anything else. two types of wood that I mentioned earlier, mahogany is the dark red one that you can see on the top, both sides, and the front of the drawers. To make the color cohesive throughout the dresser, I ended up applying three coats of a color wash to the mahogany and just one coat to the parts that were made out of maple or the lighter wood parts. And with the help of an artist brush, I touched up all the small repairs that I made throughout to camouflage them with the rest of the piece. By applying a brown glaze next, not only am I making the extra effort in blending these repairs, but I'm also adding warmth to the final finish. I have a bunch of these ready to wipe any excess off. There are a couple of things that are important to keep in mind when applying general finishes glaze, and that is that it dries quick. So I like to work in sections. I always like to miss my surface. That's gonna buy me a little more working time. 
And lastly, when you wipe down any excess, you need to make sure that you follow the wood grain because as it dries, you will see a little tiny bit of that streakiness from the glaze. Hoping this is also gonna help me hide some of those imperfections that I repair. Definitely not aiming for perfection on this piece. We're approaching the finish line here and it's all about the details to protect the finish from future scratches. I'm applying three coats of General Finishes High Performance Top Coat here. And after sanding the inside of the drawers, the wood was looking a little thirsty. So to refresh them and revive them, I'm applying this Furniture Tonic from White Sowl, which by the way smells amazing and to infuse even more life into these drawers. I'm lining the bottoms with these eucalyptus bill and stick paper I got from Amazon. And it's time, my friends. Let's remember how this guy started. And here we are today. As you guys might remember, I love the before but I am dying for this after. But let me know your thoughts on today's transformation. And I will see you guys next time.